Talking about Full Metal Alchemist can be a very intimidating task. And it's not just because it sits atop my anime list as the viewer's choice number one rated anime of all time. Never been dethroned. Not once. Ever. It's also because, well, everything that there is to say about the show seems to have already been said. I mean, you could go down a massive YouTube spiral looking for videos discussing the glorious animation on display at Studio Bones and its impeccable direction at the hands of Yasuhiro Irie for the Brotherhood adaptation. Or, if you're more interested in its colorful cast of characters with their diverse ideologies and how those worldviews, perspectives, and personalities bounce off each other, there are tons of character analyses and scene breakdowns that do just that. Not to mention deep dives into the show's many themes like what it means to be human and the implications of immortality as well as the importance and dangers of both science and religion. Speaking of which, shout out to Father of the Generation, by the way, who despite being memed to death for the better part of a decade, still managed to punch me in the gut when I rewatched this show for this video. But back on topic. As you can see, there's a lot of depth to this show. Depths that have been plumbed since 2003 when the original anime first premiered. But with that depth, it also feels like there's a never ending stream of information and revelation to be found in the show no matter how many times you watch it. It's just one of those shows. Again, look no further than our Paragon of Fatherhood. So instead of adding to the discussions that have already been made, instead I'd like to point out a couple of scenes that don't get mentioned that often, and what the implications of those scenes did to me. You see, this show has the power to touch people in very unique ways. So when I say that Full Metal Alchemist had a huge impact on my life, I am by no means speaking in hyperbole, nor am I in the minority. But what I feel is special is that it touches us in different ways. With the amount of ideologies and philosophies placed under a microscope throughout this series, the show is bound to mean a lot of different things to a lot of different people. Ideas don't just get brought up or referenced, they're analyzed, challenged even. So it leaves a lot of room for us not only to be influenced by these ideas, but it's almost as though through watching this show, we're forced into a form of introspection as we argue along with the characters in our minds as their worldviews collide, mix, and even evolve alongside each other. And it's exactly that evolution of ideas that resonated with me. But before I get into that, we gotta do a little bit of background for those of you who may not have seen the show since it aired in... 2010? Oh, Jesus Christ, I literally just realized that I'm dating myself by making this video. Uh, moving on. Full Metal Alchemist follows Edward and Alphonse Elric, two brothers, on a journey to restore their original bodies after an attempt to use alchemy, the science of deconstructing and reconstructing matter, goes wrong. You see, the boys are abandoned at a young age by their father, and in his absence, they begin to go through his many books on alchemy, following the good old faithful shonen trope of anime children trying to be just like daddy. And they discover that not only do they have a knack for the science, but they're bona fide geniuses, prodigies unlike anyone else in their entire country. Seriously, not enough has been said about the sheer intelligence Ed and Al display throughout this series. Since alchemy requires its users to intimately understand an object's molecular makeup to transmute or change one substance into another, this means that these preteens have at least a university level intellect. So when their mother dies not but a few months later, the boy's extreme knowledge coupled with their childlike arrogance pushes them to attempt the ultimate taboo of alchemy, attempting to bring her back from the dead. This is a huge deal because it flies in the face of alchemy's most fundamental rule, the law of equivalent exchange. According to the laws of alchemy, the cost of a human soul is unquantifiable, so no toll could possibly be paid to accomplish the task. The brothers end up learning this the hard way in the aftermath of their failed transmutation. Ed is left with a missing leg, while Alphonse has completely disappeared, having his entire body taken during the ordeal. In his desperation, Edward performs another transmutation to seal his brother's now disembodied soul to a suit of armor, sacrificing his right arm in the process. As for their mother... Despite their failure, however, they're quick to pick themselves up after learning of the Philosopher's Stone, a substance capable of ignoring the law of equivalent exchange and can restore Ed and Al's bodies back to normal. Upon seeing the immense talent the boys have for alchemy, Edward is recommended to become a state alchemist, a human weapon of the country affectionately referred to as a dog of the military. In exchange, he and his brother are given access to resources otherwise unattainable for the common citizen to aid in their research for the stone. It's only a mere seven episodes in though until they learn that in order to create a philosopher's stone, many, many human lives need to be sacrificed as ingredients. 
This is only the first of a series of chilling secrets the boys begin to uncover as they learn of the military's involvement in war crimes, human experimentation, and political espionage, all for the sake of creating philosopher stones for some unknown purpose. To make matters worse, soon after, a close ally to the brothers and best father of the year, Mace Hughes, is killed for uncovering too much of the military's secrets. These two defeats Ed and Al experience early on in their journey are the two events that begin to sow the seeds of growth in their characters and help them to evolve their drives and motivations. But more on that in a bit. After a few more twists and turns to the plot, Ed makes a brief return home where he runs into his father. Having not seen each other since before his mother died and he and Al attempted her resurrection, his father confronts him and asks if the monstrosity that they created was truly their mother. This sparks Ed to find this out for himself, causing him to make two huge revelations of their actions. That human transmutation is impossible, meaning the creature they created wasn't actually their mother, and that Alphonse can indeed be restored to his original body. To get an idea of how drastic of an impact this makes on the boys, we have to look even further back to the very first episode. When the freezing alchemist asks Edward if he even knows the motives of the superiors he's sworn to serve as a state alchemist, here's his response. Dude, we don't care. Clearly still as arrogant as he was when he attempted human transmutation, at this point, Ed is only concerned with his mission to get him and Al back to normal. They end up realizing their irresponsibility harshly though once they learn the cost of their research. This shock grinds the two's journey to a standstill. They become unsure of what their next move should be, should they even move at all. But with the guilt of their sin somewhat lifted off of their shoulders with this new information, and with the confirmation that their mission isn't futile, the two develop a new sense of resolve. With Ed's newfound determination and Al's acceptance of his own responsibility and agency for their past deeds, the two set off anew, with the mentality to accept all responsibilities of their actions for themselves and not to get anyone else caught up in the crosshairs of their objective. This is the exact point where their philosophy towards life and their mission shifts. Now I know I've been pretty long-winded, but bear with me here. I'm finally gonna get to my point. This new philosophy of pacifism and self-responsibility is tested many times along the two's journey, but something truly interesting happens in episode 42. From the very top of the episode, we're clued in that something substantial is about to happen through some foreshadowing from Major Miles, who comments on the brothers' remarkable commitment to their ideals, hinting that they're about to be tested. Now I've done enough background for one video, so I'll cut to the chase here, in this episode, Ed is attacked and in the midst of the chaos, he finds himself left for dead impaled by a piece of debris. His solution? To rescue two of his attackers and to get their help in removing the metal shaft while he seals up his wounds using alchemy, using his own soul as the energy source, and shortening his own lifespan in the process. You're positive? I don't really have time to think about it. If this is really what showing mercy is gonna cost me, then I'm gonna have to learn to pay the price, right? These were, and still are, powerful words to me. You see, when I first watched this show, I saw it exclusively from Ed's perspective, placing myself in his shoes. I was at an impressionable age in high school, surrounded by a lot of powerful personalities and peer pressure. And I was at a kind of a crossroads where I was determining who I wanted to be, not unlike a lot of other kids my age. But when I saw Ed's response to his circumstances, I felt genuinely challenged. In this scene, Edward is forced into a situation where his own pacifism actually places him at a disadvantage. He's forced to recruit the help of his enemies, who even themselves remark that they were attempting to take his life not too long ago, and he's also forced to use alchemy in a way that is very inconvenient for him. But despite all this, he looks directly at the implications of his ideals and embraces them with open arms, making peace with them in that very moment. The second he and his brother set themselves back on their journey after finding their resolve again, he fully accepted what kind of risks he would be taking. It's not as though he didn't have other options available to him in the moment. He could have just as easily drained the lives of his enemies instead while they were trapped, or literally anything other than shortening his own lifespan. But he didn't. And watching that gave me courage. To not only embrace my own morals and not to compromise them for anyone, but also to think them through, carefully, and intentionally, and to make sure that I can deal with all of their implications should they ever confront me. Basically, what I'm trying to say is that the show gave me a sense of maturity. Which is fitting, because maturity is yet another major theme of the show, and I guess it's one of the reasons why I resonated with the brothers, and especially Ed, so strongly as well. You watch them grow over this series. In stature, of course, but also in maturity. 
Their thoughts grow more and more complex as they experience and grapple with the world around them, and they truly become men before your eyes. And in watching them mature, I found myself growing alongside them. Now, I know it might seem strange that I got such a revelation from an animated children's show, and you could probably argue that a message like this isn't even new to the medium. But in my opinion, that just goes to show how well executed and profound some of these children's cartoons can really be. Especially when they're willing to attempt to inspire growth in their audience like this one does. Now, actually, I honestly feel that shows like these can be a pretty effective way of teaching us about the world when handled correctly, and could even make us into better people. I don't see Sword Art Online winning any Nobel Peace Prizes in the future or anything, but what can I say? The lessons that I've learned from my favorite shows like Full Metal Alchemist are always going to be with me, even as my own ideals grow and evolve over the years, and I think that's kind of cool. Thank you, everybody, for watching this video. It was a lot of hard work, and I appreciate everybody that takes the time out to watch it. It really does mean a lot to me. This is probably my moment to ask you to share your likes and comments down below, and definitely do that. <laughs> uh, but more importantly, hello and welcome. This is the YouTube channel of The Recovering Elitist, and I'll be here to upload videos talking about anime and manga, video games, all from a different angle. Uh, I like to give my different thoughts and opinions on things, and hopefully you guys find them interesting. If you found this one interesting, go ahead and do that like and comment thing, of course, but also give me a subscribe. That way you'll be able to see what I've got coming next, and I think you'll like it. All the best. Cheers.